It's a beautiful day in Lisbon. Today is the third day out of my four days stay in Lisbon. And this is what I want to do. This is what you can add to your itinerary on your third day. I'm taking a trip to Sintra, which is a charming Portuguese town situated within the cooling hills of the Serra de Sintra. This was once a summer retreat for Portuguese nobility and royalty. It's now a UNESCO World Heritage Site. This site captivates visitors with its wealth of opulent palaces, extravagant villas, and historic sites, all set amidst large forests and jagged hills. We will be visiting two sites today, which is the Pina Palace and the Quinta de Galeria. Quinta de Galeria is a neo-Gothic mansion with mystical gardens, secret passages, and even a nice Templar initiation well. The Pina Palace, one of Europe's finest palaces, vividly painted on the exterior and restored to its 1910 appearance when Portuguese nobility fled the country. So we are assembled in front of the National Palace of Sintra, where our guide was going to give us a little bit rundown of what to expect in Sintra. So we're not going to go into this palace, but this is the National Palace of Sintra. So let's take a look at it, admire it, and then uh, we'll continue on our journey. Here across the National Palace, on top of the hill, is the Castle of the Moors, or the Moorish Castle, which was built in the 8th and 9th centuries by the Moors. So this used to be hotels, where well, it is hotels now, but this like back then used to be hotels that sprang up in the era of romantic. So you will see the towers, right? Of course you all going for the towers. And I think Johnny Depp starred in the movie produced by Roman uh, Polinski. Over here, I've got a name for that movie for you. So now we are walking the town of Sintra. So we are going to walk up the hills to Quinta de Regalera. Now Quinta in Portuguese means a country villa or estate. So as we walk up, we'll see some of the villas up here, some of the beautiful historic buildings along the line. I had this building that I'm showing you. It's on sale for like 3 million euros. So if you want it, you can go get it. All right, Sintra is one of the wealthiest municipalities in Portugal, not in the Iberian Peninsula. So make sure you have comfortable shoes or sneakers. That this is it's a steep walk up the hill most of Portugal is a hilly country. All right, come with me. Let's go explore Quinta de Galera. So, okay. what is the name of this mansion again? Rigalera. Rig <laughs> that one. Rigalera. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Very good. It's written on. I will oh, take it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. I'll check it. So now it's. Oh, are we gonna go inside it? Yes. yes. Oh, oh. Okay. Yeah, I can't. I can't pronounce it's this. Better to see it. Portuguese name, but then to spell it. Don't worry. I mean, it's 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 one site specific one specific site on the inside of this. On our back. All right, have a coming. On your right hand side, yeah. you also have um, a private. I have to say, actually, uh, the garden right at the back, it's called Villa Roma. Villa de Roma? It's from 1856. This one? 1856? This one, yeah. Okay. It has 11 bedrooms. 11 bedrooms. Is it on sale? It's not for sale. <laughs> it's not for sale. <laughs> but <laughs> the owner of the house uh -huh. is an original descendant from the original family that built it in 1856. And now uh, he has a couple of bedrooms for rent, actually, in there. On Airbnb. Airbnb. <laughs> Last time I checked it, uh, this was 2017. One night per couple, and there was 200 euros. So, okay, not bad. Well, the, the price is pretty really expensive. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I'll, let you, I'll let you in. Now we're going to go through here. Yeah. <laughs> not that bad, right? Okay. 
I, I prefer that you have that mindset <laughs> than the other one. He was the son of a lawyer from the Korean Empire. That was one of the first loves. It was one of the first work, one of the first loves. The old life was this place is big. Yeah, it is. Wow. <laughs> it's just fascinating how those people lived back then. Yeah. It's unbelievable. <laughs> One of the highlights of this tour is this unique, weird well in the middle of this lush gardens. It is the initiation well, which is a spiral staircase that descends 27 meters deep into the ground, like an inverted tower. The well is not meant for water collection, but rather for symbolic and ritual purposes related to the nice Templar, the Freemasonry. The world is one of the most popular and intriguing attractions over here. It's believed that for a knight to be initiated, he will be blindfolded with a sword and walk down all the spiral staircase to the base of the well where you see eight shapes with the Grand Master standing there waiting for him. And then from there, they will walk down the path of a grotto, which you will see later. But this is a very historic and weird, but also a unique thing to see. I've never seen anything like this. Look at that. It goes all the way deep. See, so you see the bottom over there, this is a ship figure over there that's where the grandmaster will be standing waiting for the night to come down all the way so that it will be accepted into the templar or the famous anyway and this keeps whining 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 this is so deep you're standing from from the top it's it looks like about a four Wow. This is something. So when the person being initiated gets down from the well, he walks down this path. Now it's been lit because of the torch. But back then it was dark, so he's gonna walk down this dark grotto until he chooses a path that will lead him to light. All right. There's also a waterfall at the end of this, where the person is gonna walk on water to resemble Jesus walking on water. So just. Imagine how dark this place was, and you just walk in Sorry. blindfolded until you see the light. The opposite to usually what you think to it. Uh, and this was all built for nine years specifically. Dynamite, chisel, dynamite, chisel, dynamite, chisel, all the way. The rock that you see in here, part of the rock is actually natural from uh, from Sintra, you know, from Sintra, right? Uh -huh. here, all the way. But for example, this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, this is ocean petrol that was actually brought from the beach, a hundred kilometers up to the north of uh, Sintra, around seventy-five miles up to the north. Uh, from a town called Peniche yeah, as well. Yeah, that's good. Wow. Uh, and the sun is an element of fire, not an element of light to so itself. So. That's what we're doing in here. We're following the sun. Oh. <laughs> we need to breathe. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> 
Imagine what it would be to roam around in here in the dark. Yeah, in pitch black dark. Yes, yeah, crazy. You're searching for a way out within yourself. Because once again, you can't see. You can only conjure about things mm -hmm. within your own mind, within your own existence. Now we come to the outside. And God said, let there be light. Let there be light. <laughs> 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 As well. oh, okay. We call it Subrair in Portugal. And in Portugal, we are actually responsible for the production and export. Enjoy from here. All right, so we just finished the tour of that mansion and we're going back to the city of Central. We need to see the Pina Castle. Now, be prepared to walk, okay? And it's very hard walking on these stones over here. It's not comfortable at all. So if you come into Lisbon, it's a hilly, hilly city. And also, you know, this central tour. Listen, get your cardio exercise. Two weeks ahead of time, throw yourself up for this. But it's a very beautiful city. This is, you know, very historic. And to see that it's been preserved all these years, you know, it's a must see. It's a must do if you come this far. It's entirely free. You still have to pay 15 euros. But <laughs> <laughs> it's an all you can eat buffet, a restaurant in Sydney that. For only 15 years, you can eat as much as you want to. There's plenty of options in there with one beverage included. You get a glass of wine, you can eat some pints and so on. So we, we're going to have lunch at the Central Buffet. It's 15 euro, which is cheap. And it's, it's a buffet, so... Oh, it's a nice place. Uh, and the planes. Uh, nice. It's a nice place to sit. That was a good lunch. So now we're just heading to the city center, do a little shopping before we get on the bus and drive to. Pina Palace. So we just got in the bus heading towards Pina Palace which is on a mountain. So we're just going to enjoy this ride through the city of Sintra. Enjoy this mountain views. I hope you like them. It's just a beautiful town. Like I said, you have to probably do your cardio before you come over here. I walk all the way up. At this point, I feel like giving up. What are you going to say? Oh, I'm used to going up. Oh, he used to yeah, going up because yep. he lives in, in, in the mountainous national. area. Okay. I am not used to this. Going to school there was uh, a daily walk. Okay. And it was steeper than oh, this. Oh, oh, yeah? So, no, it's okay. It's okay. All right. It's not Just okay for me. <laughs> <laughs> they have a saying, five more minutes. Five more minutes? Yeah. All right. We will just struggle on this one. I'm out of breath already. Oh, boy. Mm -hmm. 
and we are nowhere near the castle. You know what? Father, I'll do whatever I want to. <laughs> All right, so we are here in our palace. Was the right cousin of this in the and, and it was I also had to do with so we are finally here at Pina Palace, which is one of the seven wonders of Portugal. Now, Pina Palace is a colorful and whimsical castle in Sintra. It was built in the 19th century by King Ferdinand II, who wanted to create a romantic retreat for himself and his wife, Queen Maria II. The palace combines elements of Gothic, Moorish, Manuelan, and Renaissance styles and is decorated with tiles, sculptures, and paintings. The palace is surrounded by a large and diverse park where you can find exotic plants, fountains, lakes, and statues. This colorful palace was inspired by the castles of the Rhine Valley in Germany, as well as the Alhambra in Spain, and the Neuschwerstein Castle in Bavaria. The palace was built on the site of a former monastery that was founded by King Manuel I in the 16th century and later destroyed by an earthquake in 1755. The palace was commissioned by King Ferdinand II, who was a cousin of Queen Victoria of England and a patron of arts and sciences. Pena Palace was designed by a German architect and engineer named Wilhelm Ludwig von Eschwick, who also supervised the construction of the palace in the park. The palace was used as a summer residence by the Portuguese royal family until the proclamation of the Republic in 1910, when it became a museum and a national monument. The palace was restored and repainted in the 1990s following its original colors and patterns and it was declared a UNESCO World Heritage Site in 1995. All right, so let's walk down memory lane where we witness the lifestyles of the royal family. We'll see some of the furnitures, the architecture, and then we'll enjoy the magnificent views from this palace. So this is the bedroom for the secretary to the king.
Like back then, they always have these coin girls and stuff like that, yeah. you know. It's, like, it's very interesting. Like if you don't pay attention, you you, you know you miss all the details. Mm -hmm. This is a lamp stand. So I'm just going to go up so we can get a better view of this interior court over here. Not a bad view from up here. Oh. That is, you can see the club from here. 